I'm here at the Compass at VCU once more to spread the message of freedom. But before I begin, I'd like to, I guess, address the question that was on the comments from yesterday about the uh, changes in the pitch towards uh, talking about the non-aggression principle first. I mean, of course, not that I'm hiding it, but of course, in different ways we try to communicate uh, and trying to dispel the propaganda of the state, we have to be very tactful, very efficient and effective in communicating these ideas. And so I've had some good discussions with some friends, uh, a friend of mine, Eric, in particular from Argentina, and talking about maybe perhaps uh, refining it and seeing how this works. And yeah, I've seen it works a lot better. Um, but I don't know, we probably have uh, two videos to, to show for so far, so we'll see. But that's pretty much what you're gonna find in every uh, mode of communication you have with anybody um, in any particular topic uh, relating to anarchism. You know, it's uh, trying to find the best way to present these ideas, effective way to kind of um, talk about freedom, talk about uh, what, what life would be like in a free and voluntary society, and talking about how it would look like in regards to urban planning, in regards to security or transportation, uh, trying to find rich, awesome, creative ways to, to reach out and connect. And that's uh, and along that way, you're going to have to continue to refine. You're going to continue to improve. You're going to continue to find words in different areas and emphasis that don't work and, and find areas that do. And, uh, and that's what all this freedom movement is about, you know, trying to communicate with each other and sharing our experiences and finding uh, different areas where it does work for each other, you know. Maybe this pitch I have doesn't work for you, but, you know, that's, that's a good starting point. You, know, you just continue to refine it. Find one that you can personalize, find one that you can, you feel that, uh, that you're, you're capable of doing, that you feel most comfortable in doing. And uh, yeah, with me, uh, I'm going to be trying the non-aggression uh, principle. And a good introduction for it. I mean, the first three questions already implies the non-aggression principle that it's wrong and immoral to to use violence, to uh, you know, to force their ideas, you know, areas uh, outside of self-defense. And so, yeah, I find it to be uh, an interesting way to kind of approach anarchism, approach uh, talking about this philosophy. And so, you know, along the way, um, hopefully you guys keep uh, watching these videos and if you see any uh, interesting critiques you'd like to share with me or any ways perhaps I could re refine or look into improving, um, share them with me. I'm very, very open about all of this stuff, sort of stuff. You know, one person alone is not going to be enough to end the state. It's going to take a community of courageous individuals together sharing these, these ideas with one another to, to finally have the strength and will to pull the plug for the matrix and end it once and for all. So thank you for watching. Hopefully you uh, enjoy this content for today and see you guys at the Victory Party. So that's the hidden violence behind <laughs> government. This matrix, this Illegal. organization only knows how to solve problems in one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus the plurality of non-violent solutions that you and I already share. So what are your thoughts on that? You want my real thoughts yeah. or my fake thoughts? Uh, <laughs> you want with your real <laughs> my thoughts? My real thoughts are what if someone wanted to kill me but no one was there to protect me? Okay, all right, all right, so we have these needs that we want. All right, so like security, I want security too. So you look what government is objectively, they have monopolized those, those areas, true, right? But you don't I have know. the You don't have the freedom to cancel, to yeah. withdraw. What if, what if we didn't use violence? Then who are we, who's gonna, who's gonna protect us when we need violence to protect us? Okay, so you can still have security from the initiation of violence. Yeah. You know, that's why like the second so question. someone initiates violence, so who's gonna stop it? Who do security. we give power to stop it? Uh, so the, the, you still have security, like when you go to a mall, they provide free security you don't pay yeah. for. You go to a nightclub, there's a bouncer. You go to Disney World, they have security. Yeah. So when you end the state monopoly on security, on courts, on judges, on law, you free up all these different ways the free market can provide, okay. right? Now you can compete and provide, you know what? I could do it better. That's not going to be harmful and abusive to you, the consumer. I'm not going to throw anyone to a cage for victimless crimes. All right, but what if there is a crime? Okay, let's say there's a law that says yeah. we can't use cannabis. All okay, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a law, and I may or may not believe in it, but yeah. let's say I do, yeah. or I don't believe yeah. in it and I do it, but it's a law. Okay, all right, all right. Okay, so perfect. So when you remove uh, okay. the government, you have hundreds of thousands of communities catering to preferences and lifestyles, right? Under government is one forced preference onto everyone into a geographic yeah. region, not the freedom to disassociate. Or so, so when you want to move into community, you can have communities 420 friendly, one right, right next door that's not, right? But you have real contracts. You're like when you move into an apartment, it says, well, you can do this, this, you know cats allowed, but dogs are okay, right? Mm -hmm. If you bring in a dog, here's the penalties, right? Yeah, yeah. But you agree. So you move to a community that says, this is uh, not a 420 friendly place, mm -hmm. here's the consequences, but you give tacit consent, yeah, right? Yeah. So in a free and voluntary society, there's consent. Mm -hmm. You don't have consent with government. You don't have consent That's with true. the political rulers. So you have the freedom then to um, have creative, awesome communities based on these preferences. I don't know if I agree with this completely, but I see where you're going with that. Right? But I'm late protest. Okay, well, that's okay, I'm sorry to meet you there. Oh, okay, I understand. Uh, I have pamphlets then. Right, do you take pamphlets? I do take pamphlets. <laughs> Thank you, I'm really sorry. I would no, no, argue no. with you. All right, take care. 
Okay. So that's the hidden bias behind government. That's the matrix. That's the or this organization only knows how to solve problems through one way, a yeah. singular way, and that's the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus the plurality of nonviolent solutions that you and I already share. Okay. So what are your thoughts on that? Uh, I think that there's some validity to what you're saying. Uh, I'm not sure I buy into the whole, completely sure, everything sure. you just said, but I mean, we do need uh, we do need government. The government's there for you know, it's appointed by God for people. Right, right. And it's so it's God ordained, and there is a, a mandate in the Bible to obey our leaders. I don't think we should disobey them. Well, oh, the leaders we need today are role models, not politicians that bribes you to follow them, that forces you to follow them. Right. Right. Uh, you know, even defining the term violence, defined as placing a person in an yeah. involuntary position without their consent. Right. right. Yeah. Like uh, rape, murder, theft, and assault, all sure. violations of personal consent. Right. Sure. Sure. So then, even the Bible says, "Do not steal, do not murder," right. in God's own words. Right. So that's the only way the government functions. Yep. Right. To the threat of murder, to the threat of extorting from you. Okay. And then the areas that government is is necessary that I do feel they monopolize those services. I want roads, I want security, I want currency, I want all these things. But they've monopolized those services that no one's allowed to compete in a free market to provide. I, I understand some of that. I think you're right to a large degree. Right. I think there's a lot of problems with government. Uh, I think that until we obtain term limits on politicians, we're going to continue to have the kind of politicians that we have now, right. which are career politicians that yeah. don't do the same, don't do the right thing for the people, but they do the right thing for them. That's that's what they're that's what politicians are supposed to do. <laughs> well, that's what we've gotten used to, but that's not the original idea that we had in this country right. for them. Well, you give that exception to that sin, you give an exception to that violence, it continues to it grow does. and fester, it and does. It, and that's and that's what has happened. We grant any one person political power, right? Right. Um, and, 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 in terms of universalizing this principle that we already share against yep. using violence, yep. that, you know, like uh, universal, like the theory of gravity or thermodynamics or like the universal law of God, you know, don't initiate force in anyone. That includes politicians, that includes the police, that includes anybody, what, what costume you wear, what blue or green, you know, it doesn't matter. No matter who you are, it's wrong and more for anyone to initiate that violence. So are you a libertarian candidate? Uh, I guess free market anarchism? Uh, I guess market libertarianism market. with the lower case, little, little L, not okay. political party. I'm okay. part of a non-political organization. Pretty okay. much just turning to our community and turning away from government. Okay. Um, so yeah, invitation, all beliefs, all ideas, all this stuff is welcome. Um, but in the way, same way that we don't use violence in our day-to-day -day lives to, to solve our problems, let's further extend that outwards, right? Yep. Uh, communicate, persuasion, talk, but government only knows how to solve problems so through the threat of and use of violence. I, I somewhat it agree it with you. It contradicts your, our moral values to begin yeah, with. Yeah, I, I somewhat agree with you. Okay. Uh, let me ask you a question. You asked yeah. me something now, okay? Please, yeah, absolutely. What, tell me your name again. My name is Cal. Cal, okay. Yeah. Cal, let me ask you a question. We're talking about morality. Sure. Right? In government. Yeah. Let's talk about morality on the individual level. Yeah, yeah please. Right? Cal, do you yeah. think you're a good person? Am I a good person? Yeah. Uh, I guess that's uh, not something I can kind of own my reputation. Other people would have to say whether I'm a good yeah. person or not. I'm on my, judge my own actions. Okay. I guess I would say. Well, what do you think? I mean, what do I you, think? You I guess know I, I try, I try to, uh, to strive for, for that idea of goodness. All right. Yes. Yeah, let me virtue. ask you this. Let me ask you this. Do you think um, that it's the things that you do or the things that you don't do that make you a good person? That's a good question. Uh, I think I think there's a lot of good that you can kind of do as long as that's not forcing to anyone that can be considered good. You wouldn't force your beliefs on anybody. Right, you? absolutely. So you're out here presenting your beliefs. Yeah, talking about it. And that's good. Yeah. And you're not threatening violence yeah. to anybody <laughs> who doesn't disagree with you. Yeah. And I'm not either. Yeah. But here's my question. Let me give you the good person test. I want you to take it for yourself, okay? Sure. You might not want to have this on the video later. No, no, but, no, this is fine. But it's good. It's a good thing to think about. All right. So let, you're a good person. You're a nice guy. Okay, you're friendly. Oh yeah, you're sharing what you believe. You're not, you're bold. That's good, that's good. All right, but let me ask you this. Have you ever told a lie? Ever told a lie? Yeah. Uh, I guess. In your whole life? In my whole life, have I told a lie? I mean, I've, I guess before I, I accepted this view of the immorality of government, I was, I guess, in a, a different kind of person before. Sure, sure. Uh, I would, before, I wouldn't say I was a good person in the past. Right. Um, you know, coming to defining the terms, defining what morality is and virtues. Yeah, so I have told lies in the past. All right. uh, I now. wasn't a good person uh, in the past. All right. All right, so if you tell lies, people, are, they call you, there's a name for you. What do people call you if you tell lies? <laughs> In addition to that, it starts with an L. Call you a liar, right? A liar. Right. Okay. Cal, have you ever taken something that wasn't yours? Even when you were, like, let's say when you were a bad person. Did, right. you, ever, did you, you ever steal anything? When I, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I used to. 
if you steal stuff, people call you a name. What do they call you? Thief. Exactly. Yeah. Or a Can't. politician. All right. That's true. That's true. All right. So, but we're talking about you now. Yeah, 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 you're not. Yeah. You're not a politician. All right. Now let me ask. Yes. <laughs> now let me ask you. Have yeah. you ever used God's name in vain? Taken His name in vain? Used His name as a curse word? No. Any time in your whole life? No. Okay, that's good because that's a bad thing to do, right? Sure. You would, you would agree with that, right? Uh, well, I, I guess I don't. I don't really have a. I need to. I mean, there's sort of the words I can use. Here. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Now, Jesus said, if you look at a woman to lust after her, you committed adultery with her in your heart. But if I find another person of being attracted to her. I didn't say that. I said, if you have a thought about a woman that yeah. is immoral, I'm not saying that you have looked at her and said, that's a beautiful woman. Right. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Yeah. We, we can look at people and think that, but if yeah. you ever had a sexual thought about someone that you wouldn't want your mother to know about, has that ever happened to you? Has that ever happened? To look at someone uh, sexually lust, attracted? With, yeah, with yeah, sure, body. yeah. I okay. find a lot of people sexually attracted. Okay, now that's the, that's the sin of adultery of the heart. You don't have to actually commit the sin to right. be guilty of that sin. So here's what we want. I want you to think about sure. this. You're a good, you're a nice guy, but you're not a good person because you're a lying, thieving, adulterer at heart. I'm an adulterer. Well, it doesn't adultery imply, though, that I have to be married first? No, it doesn't. Doesn't that imply the, uh, well, the jealousy? Well, I mean, in, in, in the broadest sense, right? it probably but does. But I'm not married, so how does that imply to me that I'm an adulterer? That just You're says an I, I'm at looking heart. at the person objectively, that you you seem like a beautiful person, you have very attractive qualities. It's uh, lust of the heart, that's what I'm saying. Lust of the heart. What's wrong with uh, finding people attractive? Uh, there's nothing wrong with finding a lady attractive. It's another thing to think about things in your mind and to think about things that you would want to do right. that are not that you shouldn't be doing if you're not married. That's my point. Oh, so like thinking negative thoughts. Still not well. negative. I'm just talking sexual and moral thoughts. I don't think there's nothing negative wrong with that. Well, that's what the Bible says. That's lust of the heart. All right, okay, you okay. might not agree with it, right. but that's what the Bible says is lust of the heart. I don't think it's good to shame people for finding their sexual preferences in different areas. I don't think I, that's good I, I'm not trying to shame you. I'm trying to tell you what the Bible says well, I mean, about it, morality. But it, well, I'm, not, I'm not talking about the Bible, but saying like it's you should feel guilty or shamed for, for looking at people and finding their... their Attractive, or you find them. Uh, I didn't say that. I, I think that you can look at a beautiful woman. But you say I'm not a good person because I do that. I'm saying you're not a good person because you've committed sins. I've committed sins. Yes. Uh, the sin of finding other people attractive. The sin of lust. The sin of lust of the heart. All right, this might be a difficult contest. I'm, I'm very open for, for sexual preferences, so I really don't find being that to be bad or, or wrong. But okay. at the same time, that's that's my culture that I come from. But I respect other people's cultures where they may be that. Where are you I from? Do, uh, I grew up in Bolivia. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, I didn't I'll, really grow up much with, with religion myself. I, I'm right, not so. trying to be confrontational yeah, 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 with you. Yeah. I'm not trying to make you. Yeah, and I don't want. I don't want to agree that I, that I'm sinful. Because uh, yeah. I'm, I'm not religious at all. I understand. Uh, so I, I don't want to come off yeah. off putting like uh, for for your own beliefs. Yeah. And uh, well, let me ask you this. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Do you think you're a sinner? No. Well, I just proved to you that you've, you've lied. Well, I don't, I don't know what a sinner is. What is a sinner? A sinner is someone who violates God's laws. What have you, you ever done that? If you don't believe in God. That doesn't matter. Why doesn't that matter? Because he either exists or he doesn't exist. Whether you believe in him or not is not the issue. What the issue is, is it true? Well, the issue is, if you, if you believe in God or not, right. if he's existing, you've got a problem because everybody does have a problem. Everybody is a sinner. We, we commit sins because we have a sin nature. All sure. I'm trying to get you to see is, is that you're a sinner. Okay, I can understand that. I'm not what, trying to heap guilt what, on you. I want you to see it for yourself. But I guess for me, because I can't see that right now, what I can see, though, are people being extorted. What I can see, though, is people being thrown into cages for this crime. And I want to deal with those problems first. I and then, and then, I, then I want, yeah, then we can talk about spirituality and all that sort of stuff. I understand. Uh, but but, but I, just, I want to deal with the things in my face, with the violence here that I can deal with, have actionable plans for spending that. Um, I understand. But what I'm trying to get you to understand is, is that if, as a sinner, right. you and I, I'm, sure. and I'm not trying to say that you're worse than me. Yeah. Everybody has this problem. Right. Everybody that's walking around and breathing has this problem. We're sinners. That's why we do things how that do are you, sinful. How do you escape from that? How do you escape from that? That is the question. That is a great question. Okay. I want to. I want to. I'm going to answer that question. But before I do, I want to tell you one more thing. Okay. I want to ask you a question. Actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, if you are a sinner, and I'm not quite sure you believe you are at this right. point. Okay. But if you were, yeah. that's a big if, right? If you were a cow, and you died. And you stood before God. Right. Would it be Would it be right for God to punish? You? I'm looking towards uh, free market solutions to prevent death, cryogenic, uh, freezing my body or extending my life. Uh, you know, body organ transplants, nanotechnology. But one day you're going to die, and if that doesn't exist, or even if it does, one day you're going to die. Right? Why does why, why do I have to die? Because everybody does. 
I don't think you have to. I think, but there's, there's an organism, a living creature on this planet, in the ocean, that's going to wait to cheat death. It's going to wait to revert back into a youthful state. The only thing it Who could is die. That? What is this? This is jellyfish organism. Okay. Uh, but you're not a jellyfish. I know, but if this one creature, yeah. right? If all creatures were created by God, this one creature has found a way to cheat death. It doesn't have to be an option. Then certainly there'll be a way we can harness that and ourselves be given that same option. That we don't have to. I die. don't think that's it an option have to be for there. most people. Right, because I think that's uh, the an unrealistic. Well, it's unreal. Well, it's unrealistic in the sense when people look back 100 years ago, people can't fathom all this technology that we have today. Right. But look, fast forward to. Well, that's right. Yeah. That, she's, my wife says, this appointed on a man wants to die, and after this, the judgment. So here's right. the point. Okay. Just think about this yeah, for yeah, a second. Yeah. One of these days, if you don't get hit by one of those VCU buses, <laughs> right? right? You're going to be an old man, right? Yeah. And you're going to die one day. Now, you're going to die, and you're going to stand before God. Whether you believe in Him or not, sure. that's not the issue. Sure. He exists. He says, I'm real. Okay? The Bible tells all, all through the Bible that He says He is who He says He is. Sure. And the Bible says that He's going to judge wicked sinners. Okay? Now, I know you don't think yourself as wicked, but you and I and everybody walking around here today have committed sins. We're guilty before God. When we die, if we die in that state, there's one thing that he's going to okay, do. So they, you know what that is? So they have a show he's going to throw us into hell. Why is that? Because we're deserving of hell because we violated his holiness. Can I ask you an honest question? Absolutely. Great. Um, if God doesn't exist, doesn't that kind of make you a schizophrenic? If God doesn't exist? Yeah. yeah. Do you feel schizophrenic? Because I, I feel like you sound crazy. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think I'm crazy. I mean, like, given the culture, you you're not crazy, exist? but How do you I'm know letting you know exist? that I think you're a schizophrenic. Don't you, well, don't you think that, well, that's your opinion, but don't you think that there's plenty of evidence for God? I mean, when you look around, don't you see that his handiwork everywhere? I mean, does, it's reasonable to think that he exists, though, don't you? The honest, he made would be, you. The, honest, the honest would be on you to prove to me that he exists. And I don't yeah. need to disprove that. It's like, it's like the honest is on you to prove on to me that he could exist. All right, I'll, I'll prove exist. to you, but I don't think uh, this is going to... I don't think this is going to satisfy you. I don't, I don't think, think it's think happened yet. Satisfy. I don't think that's ever yeah, happened. I don't think this is going to satisfy you. Sure. Let me ask you this. Would you, what would you think of that me if I said, this wristwatch that I have on my fit, on yeah. my hand right here, one day, about a million years ago, it was just a bunch of particles that was whirling around in space, and it was glass, and it was metal, and all of a sudden, this big explosion took place, and it came yeah. together, and it formed a wristwatch, yeah. and it works perfectly, and it tells time, as yeah. long as I keep a battery in it. Yeah. What would you say about that? Would you think that that happened? Did that, did that watch evolve? I would say, I think it's an awesome of some kind of interstellar black hole explosion that created this universe. Did that watch evolve? Did that hey, watch uh, evolve? I'm uh, God. I Who made I, the watch? I'm God. Uh, so, uh, I, I, I want 10% of your watch. There was a watchmaker. Can I get 10% of your your watch? There was a watchmaker, right? <laughs> Just like there's a because we know that there is a creation, right. that proves that there is a creator. But well, what about evolution? I know it doesn't. It's not true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Earth's at least six thousand years old, man. Okay. Dinosaurs Listen, didn't really oh, exist this, either. My wife brings up a good point. Right. She said about the DNA. Uh, you know that Darwin, and during his life, he wasn't so committed to evolution as many people walking around on the campus. In fact, he said that if it was possible to prove his theory was wrong, right. he would change his mind about evolution. Did sure. you know that? Sure. You know what the proof is that Darwin was wrong? What's that? DNA. Okay. They didn't have DNA when Darwin postulated this theory. If he had that evidence today, I'm telling you, because he was a smart man, he would not be an evolutionist. You, you, but everybody even, even on this campus, this almost argument, everybody, like, buy, but, everybody buys this whole idea of evolution. Well, no, you, you, can, you can even buy that from huh? religious aspects. But at the same time, there's a lot of people in the past who did get a lot of stuff wrong. And today, in the 21st century, we have improvements. You look in the Civil War, Sturges is cutting up people's limbs because they didn't sterilize their equipment. Today, we have more, much more advancement. I would not go to the past and seek Darwin's advice on problems in the future. I would talk to contemporary people. So for me, great great contribution of uh, the Darwin has just created, but I would look to people that are alive today and hear the If your God is like all-powerful and all-knowing and omniscient, couldn't he just be the person in charge of evolution? Like, couldn't that just be one of the things we don't know because we're human. Like you can't accept that argument. Because Somebody, some people of your believe in this called the theistic evolution. Some people believe that, and they think that that satisfies the whole idea of God actually let it evolve and He, he created all this. I thing, feel like God is just a destructive force. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible. I know. Says. Like you keep referencing back to this book yeah. that's killed so many people. Like there's so many beliefs that How are so book messed killed up. Anybody? The Crusades. Which one do you want to point to? Where are we now? Like what's going on, man? Nice God.
Huh? I'm just not buying it. Got in the book. With so, uh, nice were you trying to spread anarchy today? I felt no, like you were no, trying no, to spread no, anarchy no, today. Yeah. Uh, all right, well, well, let's just get back to the tip to point. Uh, uh, there's a connection I do see here, okay. right? You, you can't without hesitation. You already know that God's law is higher than man's law, right? Without hesitation, you follow God's law. And God says, do not steal. Taxes are nothing but that. God says, do not murder. Organized war is nothing but murder. So the government goes in contradiction from this or moral values to begin with. It contradicts and goes against God. I don't disagree with you, but here's the point. Jesus said, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar and under God the things that are God's. Now listen, he gave us a soul. Okay, he gave us a spirit, and we're walking around here breathing his air, not ever being thankful for it, violating his laws by doing wicked things. Sure. And when we die, he's going to give us what we deserve. He's going to give us justice. But what we need is mercy. And if you don't, re you can refuse him if you want, but you do that to your own peril. And I'm saying to you that the Bible is God's word. It just sounds like the root of your like super ego schizophrenia, man. I don't need it. So okay, well, don't ha cool. you don't have to have it. I, I don't be angry about no, it. I'm like, just I'm telling just you what the Bible says. I'm just trying honest. to make an. I'm just trying to make it's a rational cool. argument. I, 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 I have nothing against. I'm not insulting or, you by by saying that you disagreeing with me is schizophrenia. My, my views are not schizophrenic. I'm just telling you what the Bible says, and it makes right. sense if you think about it. If if God is holy, listen, if He's holy, right, and He's perfect, and He can't be in the presence of sin, and we're creatures that are filled with sin. He's not going to let us be with him, but he has done something that we can, that he's done something for us that fixes this problem if we will come to him on his terms. That's the problem. We don't like his terms, okay? We don't like what he's done to, to redeem us. We don't like his solution. You ever talk to someone on acid and just goes isn't in a that, loop? Isn't that like just a loop? Three, like, if God is about sin, how does he create sin? It's he like, didn't create sin. But didn't he create, he created God is not things. able to be tempted and he doesn't tempt oh, us. By the way, man, we're going to grab a beer at a half hour. You want in? That's good. Yeah, your beer? We're, we're going to grab a beer at the well. Things. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. That sounds good. I know what camera and everything, but it's like, yo, I'm not sticking around for this. Well, they could let me explain. Not, uh, any beliefs and ideas, uh, religion or, or lack thereof, all of these ideas are perfectly welcome. The problem is the violently forcing these ideas onto other people, and that's the problem. Right? Instead of rational discussion, persuasion, talking to one another, all ideas are welcome. Uh, except as, you know, if, if, like the way that, uh, you know, you may be religious, you may find like a hostile animosity toward others' religious group, but it's that action, not just the thought. The thought alone is harmless, but that action and forcing that idea violently onto other people is the problem. Uh, I just I don't need redemption, man. I'm not facing good. the accusation. Okay. I'm not man guilty. I'm not in cuffs. There's nothing the physical here. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to move on with my life. Can I ask some Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. Yeah. Like, do you believe in right and wrong? Right and wrong? Yes. You no, they yeah. didn't. So, they didn't what if, like, if he's saying, would you like to come in in the conversation? They died yeah. spiritually, okay? Right That's right our here. problem. We are spiritually dead. Right, cool. You and I are so, physically like, alive. We know He's calling wrong sin, I guess you could say. So, do you believe in sin? Uh, no. No, but you believe in wrong? I believe, uh, I guess, there's preferable ways to go about looking at things, right? So like, like, like morality, for example, right? The way you would define something that's good is universal, that is applicable to all people. Something that's bad is universally applicable bad for all people. Like, so like it's bad to murder, it's not bad for just you to murder, it's also bad for this gentleman, this gentleman, any any person, it's bad for anyone no, to No, but my God told me to murder you, man. Right. So it's bad for, for not for just stealing, for example, it's bad for anyone to steal, so anyway, not just you or him, so but including I, politicians, right? So they say it's wrong for you to steal, bad, but they'll hide it and call it taxes, mm -hmm. right? Well, so that's their compromise and their forcing preferences. Response. But yeah, I, I believe well, in, uh, so you, you say yeah, in right right yeah, something like that, yeah. Okay, so the idea of government, you're basically saying is the government Tells us not to do things that it does itself. Right. Okay. Well, yeah. but it's kind of hard. But to take from the one thing, I mean, I could see like with murder, you say the government murders and does war, but sometimes doesn't war prevent murder? I mean, look at World War II and the Holocaust. Right. War stopped the Holocaust. Well, what 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 created the Holocaust? The government. Yeah. It's How did Hitler get elected? Democratically. Yeah. Right. What led to World War II? World War One. Right. Before the United States uh, entered the war, and all the history of Europe, there used to be like maybe Napoleon tried to get an outreach. All the other countries united and defeated him and everything went back to normal. And World War One, when the United States finally entered the war, finally there was a loser and there was a clear winner. Devastated Germany, right? It was in, there was another going to be another war inevitable. But without governments, there's no war. Without governments, there's no tax system because you need tax systems to fund your war. Is there no security without government? Or so the security that we want, uh, the government has monopolized. Like, like, so like uh, having a police officer or roads or judges, of course. These are areas the government has monopolized. 
monopolized, and I don't have the freedom to compete and provide a better service. But isn't it provided for everybody then? Because but at gunpoint. Yeah. Well, not at gunpoint. I'm because saying you have to steal your money to if, it, if it was a free market thing, security, for instance. Yeah. Then whoever had money would get security. Whoever didn't have money would. Oh, so then you'll have like all awesome like phone plans. Like you have all kinds of phone plans up to your budget. But you have all kinds of security, insurance plans, all sorts of stuff. Like you go to a mall, there's not one t-shirt business. There's like, you know, 50 of them. Right? So we would have a bunch of warlords. Uh, no warlords. You just have a lot of. But I'm like, if I have a lot of money, then I can hire a lot of security. Sure, right? sure. Uh, yeah, you can hire your security. But in, you have a contract. That person, of course, for me, uh, signing up with that security is like, well, you know, war is very costly. You don't, you don't. There's no taxes anymore to fund it. So as a business, like, I don't think I want to take that measure, right? If there's a conflict with another person that's covered by their own security, it's like, well, we negotiate, we talk. Hey, let's meet these standards together. Like, AT&T does for Sprint. Uh, they don't. Like, when you go to a food court, uh, McDonald's not killing Burger King. The only aggressive stance they have is like, hey, please try a free sample. Yeah. Right. So that's what you'll have. Also, Cheaper. if I'm a business owner, I don't want my customers to be robbed and murdered. So I want their money legitimately. Therefore, I would care what the neighborhood looks like that I'm opening shop in. But I think the whole like reason government even came about was because you had people around that wanted a structure and wanted guaranteed protection because like the idea that someone say like I have a ton of money and then I I'm like, okay, I could get all these guys to come fight for me. We go take over this town, but I'm not gonna do that because I want the money. But then somebody will like. Yeah, and it's already happened. We lived under the United States of America and Virginia, Richmond. Like all these are different groups that orchestrate violence every day to, to do exactly what you just said. You have Henrico police communicating with Richmond police, with VCU police. None of them are fighting over territory. We will have that in a free and voluntary society. But at least we would. We would. We would have that. Yeah. Free and voluntary society. Free service. We do have guys. First community spot, right? No monopoly law. Polycentric legal system. A community that's work twenty friendly, one across the street that's not. So you're saying the only way violence would be initiated would be in self defense as opposed to just law enforcement well, that's, in general. Again, but that's then you're what you're saying is everybody is good. Like there's no evil person out there where No, but those jobs would still be outsourced. They wouldn't be a monopolized service. So like if you move like uh, one like, one of these exists, like golf course communities, they have homeowner associations, they provide for they provide security, right? There's consent, there's real agreements. I um, mean, that's what I want, real agreements to the consequence, right? Um, you know, you may, may have a serial killer on the loose, but he won't be living in these communities. He's not agreeing to those contracts. No one's going to allow him to live there. He'll be living in the woods, right? But of course, but, I mean, a lot of times you don't know who a serial killer is. So, I mean, that's one example. Like, say you have a community, yeah. and somebody's going around killing right. people, but who's going to find it? Because the security firm, private investigators. But who's going to hire it? People will, just like they hire them right now today. Even like people in the, the family, they want to know. Like, but at the same time, nearly half your income is not going to be stolen from you, right? Yeah. So you have so much more to 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 your, you know divert your resources. I don't like taxes, so right? I'm gonna do that. I well, I mean, so. like you tied too. So what's that? Like sixty percent now? Like you only own forty percent of your income. So much back in your pocket. So many jobs available now. All the regulations on restricting businesses from growing, and hiring employees. Back. So much different areas. I believe in like in utopia. There would be no government. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't, but I don't want utopia. I want there to be problems. Utopia implies like stagnation, idleness. I want there to be problems, but free and voluntary, peaceful, non-violent ways to solve those problems and keep upgrading and updating and finally maybe get off this rock, you know? Go to Mars, go to, go, go to, go to Saturn, you know? But don't you think like that's why government evolved basically is because of these problems and people are like, hey, we need you to be in charge. I think they got tricked. Yeah, I think somebody, I think the somebody swindled the them with the use of language. Uh, they combined concrete and abstract concepts and in, in their former communication uh, were like concretely only individual well, people exist, right? There's no such thing as Americans or Mexicans, yeah. only individual people exist. Uh, but now, as a government, you can collectivize that and put in we. They can now tie your history with the government history. They can say like, uh, you're, you're part of the reason of the Civil War, right? We did this. We, it's like, I was not even alive back then. Yeah. <laughs> I never fought in those wars. <laughs> How do you associate it with me? Yeah. So they use language in, in, in tricking us into uh, and not so much being collective, but also being separate, right? So at the same time, that's where the language comes into play. And they'll say, you're not allowed to steal, we'll call it taxes. You're not allowed to murder, we'll call it organized war. 
war. You know, there's no such thing as a war on drugs. In reality, it's a war on people. What is? So government. So it's, maybe there's this big swindler, this greatest liar that existed a long time ago to figure out and use that on against the benevolency on, on the goodwill of people and trick them. And that's how you got government. Uh, so I mean, it's it's to look at things objectively is what will free us from that. Yes. Yeah. I mean, because I totally agree. Like I think the government's corrupt. Yeah. I don't like government, but I do think that a small transparent government would be good. Obama premise transparency. Yeah, but they, 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 they. <laughs> no, all politicians will like to you. I know. Don't that's that's why I so don't you, like politicians right. so, that I like. So yeah, so so let's so we don't need political rulers. We can have so that's what we advocate for is anarchy. Free market anarchism. By definition, anions and cations, and means without anarchy means rulers. Like uh, monarchy. One political ruler, anarchy means without political rulers. Right? So we can so we we need if you had one leaders for example, yeah. I like a role model, you know, or but but not politicians that forces you to follow them, that bribes you to follow them, right? And but they do that through force, through the initiation of force, right? But if you universalize the principle that it's wrong and immoral for anyone to initiate that violence, that that includes politicians, that includes the government, and then you realize that the government is a contradiction to that moral principle. Right, a contradiction more beliefs to begin with, right? And so what, what's needed right now is to have the integrity to to have these beliefs consistent with their ideas and our actions, right? Not to legitimize the government, not to advocate for it, just ostracize it and turn to our community. We don't use violence to solve our problems today, day to the life, so let's turn to our status, right? We can choose something greater, something beautiful, something that has never been seen before. You know, like when you ended slavery 100 years ago, they couldn't fathom how agriculture would look like when you ended that system of violence. Mm -hmm. right? Do you think it's possible when there are so many governments? So, I mean, if we get rid of a government, right. then another government is just going to Right, but they, they come and take over because of the idea, right? But without, but if there's no no government here, there's no taxes. No one's going to agree to that. They see for what it is. Death. Like when you see a mafia, you see them for what they really are. They're not, they're not trying to pretend like there's something else. When you see government, then for what they really are, they're nothing but a mafia organization. <laughs> People don't let credence to that authority, false idea. They used I mean, to wear red coats, now they yeah. wear blue. Yeah. Outfits. Uh, uh, all right, and, and, and so, like you're talking about, like independent other government wanted to take over a free and voluntary society. All right, so what ended up happening? They're not just facing one defense force; they're facing hundreds, of thousands of free market defense forces. Yeah, but the problem is, I mean, think about it. Think about it, like with Hitler in World War II. Right. There had to be Germans that didn't want that. People aren't gonna get away. But he had the guns, he had the men, and he took over. So in other words, say we make this free market in America. Yeah. No government. Yeah. Another government comes in with an army. Yes. Hey, we we're have taking defense. Over. Well, what are they going to take over? Well, the only reason Hitler wanted to take over France is to take over the taxes. Without taxes, you don't have the funds to fund your your war machine. Mm -hmm. So there's no taxes here to take over. Do you feel like that still couldn't happen in America? Like well, what? fascism. The new Hitler, like, sure. right? Like, so we still have the problem. I feel like, no, I mean, <laughs> but that's because of the government. Uneducated. There's also a nuclear. No, I don't think it's the government. I think it's uneducated population. There's also nuclear deterrence. So, um, yeah, man. Uh, let me, let me drop. Let me drop. Uh, but that's what you'll find. But the thing is, now one person is going to offer one solution. The government always says, this is the solution. It's going to be in a free market. Thousands of different solutions to trying to solve those problems. Right? You liberate the world. But sometimes it's kind of like a group project. When you get too many people, then you can't get anything done. A group project to create Apple. group project to create Microsoft. Dell. Uh, but security is a different thing because you're looking out for your own self-interest. Like when they created those companies, they were looking out for themselves. So I'm not going to look out for someone someone else with my security, right. I would look out for myself. Sure. So then the government comes in as one army, right. they're, they're looking at their own self-interest, but in their own self-interest, like you're saying, it's a whole but you, but you don't have the freedom to cancel, withdraw, compete against that. And anytime you have a monopoly on anything, the cost always continues to rise, mm -hmm. and the quality continues to depreciate. You never gave consent to social security, but you're forced to pay for it, and you'll never have it when it's time for you to retire. Right? And that's what happens when you monopolize, when there's no free market competition. You have no freedom of economic choice. You can't even compete. Um, so you, you, the same thing with the defense. All right, so one good example that exists today, Detroit has filed for bankers. This is going to happen with every city across the country. San Clemente is next, Philadelphia is having problems, a lot of unfunded liabilities like Social Security. Uh, so the police response rates is like over an hour. Over an hour. But there's this guy, though, called a threat management system. It's only security that he created, and he's providing these for this neighborhood. And these people are volunteering pain for this security. Crime rates have dropped down dramatically. There's, he's never thrown anyone to a cage for victims' crime. 
We need to do that. Right. So that's what happens. You, you free up a lot of, there'll still be non-profit organizations. There'll still be people. What about the poor? What about these people who don't have security? The fact that we ask those questions implies that we really care about finding solutions to them. Right? But we can do it much more efficiently and effectively with our own resources to half of it not taken away from, from government. Right? We can have sustainable currency that's not collapsing. You know, the U.S. dollar has also been monopolized. It's lost over 97% of its value. That hurts the poor the worst. No incentive to say that. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, like, economically, all free market. Yeah, I just, I just can't, I still don't see it ever happening because of one other government. Oh, so, a fear for other governments. Well, so this idea will permeate them. This idea is, is, is borderless, right? This idea will reach out to Europe, will reach out to, to the other countries. And other people, the most we can do is put that spotlight of freedom here in Richmond, and those people themselves will want that freedom, see the envy that we have here. And they themselves will dismantle and, and overthrow their own government towards a free and voluntary society. They themselves will end that tyranny, right? But the problem I think you have too is with an uneducated society or population, like you're saying, like people will seek out their own yeah, yeah. choices, but then when you have an uneducated population who doesn't think rationally or act rationally, right. then you have a bunch of irrational decisions being made, which then make it Well, you can thank the public indoctrination school systems for that, right? <laughs> oh, no, congrats, nice. <laughs> so, for me, I didn't. I actually didn't. But, but that to me, that's the biggest issue I see with anything. When it, right. whether it comes to the government, like I don't think the government's bad because the government is. Well, if it's truly elected by the people, it is elected. But it's elected because people have misinformation. People don't study. Like, right. Are educated. Uh, and you can look at. Uh, I mean, you, so you're talking like uh, if people as intellectual capable. I think most for the most part, people universally prefer good. Universally, mm -hmm. most people don't want to use violence or cell phones. They don't have to know the intricacies and how a cell phone works or how a car engine works and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. If it works, it works, right? That's what they'll follow and understand it and they'll embrace that, right? So they don't have to be educated in economics to understand that. They just have to be educated uh, in knowing that you don't have a freedom of choice. Mm -hmm. Government restricts that. That's all you really need to know. The rest of everything falls into place. Um, you know, it's just a free market that's going to find solutions, it's going to find a way. Now, why do we send Jesus a Right? I mean, maybe. I mean, it's honestly, it's a great idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's a great idea, but it's almost, it almost hits me like the idea of communism, which is also great. It's not it's a great idea. That still has government. That still has I know, but communism rulers. done correctly isn't what, I keep hearing that. Uh, it's never, well, no example in history. Everybody's tried communism. It's never worked. Because it's always corrupt. <laughs> Every government is corrupt. Yeah, I agree. Right. And I'm, we're not advocating for government. We're trying to get rid of the idea once and for all. So we don't, so we can finally. But the only time we've ever seen that Where's would that? be at the beginning of time, basically. There's the actually, of mankind, uh, the closest stateless society would have been in Iceland for medieval Iceland for several hundred years, up to 500 years. She'll have one aspect of government that involved the criminal justice system, but because that one exception to government, it finally allowed for people to bribe that official and eventually the whole thing collapsed. So they almost could have had it, but that one exception to violence to that So evil, how could you get rid of that though? Of course. Uh, or, or, of course. So you, you provide competing dispute resolutions. You already have this today, like eBay. Yeah, but right? couldn't that be bribed just as easily? Uh, all right, so the moment that someone finds out that eBay got bribed, Oh my God, they're going down. Someone's going to say, go to us like Netflix, try to raise the prices overnight. People are like, oh, forget that. Cancel and subscribe. Go to Hulu. Right? All your competitors will go like, we'll point at you and say, look, we'll provide your guarantee. So you're saying, you're basically just saying competition. Right. Roots out. Yeah. All that stuff. So you have more than one justice system. Kind yeah. Of Polycentric okay. legal system. Yeah. So, it, so that is what they didn't have in Iceland. Right. That goes into the spleen. That's what we don't have today. Right. Uh, that's, that's what I want. You, you, you're like a judge that you pay his salaries, but he can hold you contempt of court because he doesn't like what you're wearing. Because you're not standing for the pleasure of allegiance. Right? It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. How about you stand for me? I'm paying your salary. <laughs> like, can you imagine going to, you know, uh, like a, a restaurant and you have to stand up and call your server your honor? <laughs> right? How does that work? So that, besides that, are there any other? Because the only time I would think before... All right, so it, it works it, even objectively though. It works all around us here. No one's using violence to solve problems. We're all using non-violent solutions to solve our disputes. It's, it, there's anarchy all around us. Yeah. Uh, that what government then is objectively is a small group of people who claim the authority to initiate that violence into everyone into a geographic region. Those well, don't we give them the authority though? Uh, yeah, I don't. Yeah, because I never granted them, never gave consent, right? But uh, they can tell, they can say what what uh, what you can and cannot do with your body, but you can't tell them the same, right? 
It's this top-down system. Um, you well, they function under the same laws. Well, they, they create their own laws, right? The laws only apply to you, not to them, right? Like Obamacare only yeah. applies to you, not to yeah. them, right? Yeah. So that's what it is. This is a real slave master tax cattle system that they create. It's hard for me to argue this because I'm so in agreement that the government is bad. <laughs> like, I agree with that so bad. I just don't... I just can't think of a society functioning without it simply because... Right. But that's what we need to work on right now. That's what I want to have a peaceful tradition towards right now. Right. Um, that's what uh, all the services government has monopolized. I want to provide a freedom of tradition. I want to provide a transition to, to cover those same services. Right. Uh, to have a have finally real choice. To finally really be free. Mm. We have to work for that. We have to stand up to that tyranny. Because I'm, 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 I am economics major, right? So I'm all about. Oh, you know, there we go. I'm all about all that. But the one thing we always say is we want lowest taxes, but we still want roads and we still want right. security. Roast That's that. the two yeah. things yeah, right, we say. Right. So roast that. But then. I see what you're saying. Yeah. A company would build the roads because they, they won't be able to get there. Right. Is every business is built roads to begin with. Yeah. The government steals it from you, sells it out to the politically connected lowest denominator. Yeah. Uh, that's why it's like driving Again, around the moon around here. I, I think like it's a perfect idea in like a in a world where there's no one trying to harm anybody. I just don't see like so for now, for instance, like if we're just on campus, yeah, anarchy, yeah. nothing here, no government. There'll be security. I, yeah, yeah. I believe in guns. Yeah. I believe in people yeah. with guns. Freedom, so. freedom of all that stuff. The last people you want to mess with are people who can be armed against that territory, right? <laughs> Nobody being disarmed at gunpoint. Yeah. Right? Yeah, exactly. It's a, I mean, it's a great idea. All right, well, then we got to... That's the thing. Let's turn to our community and turn away from government. Let's unite with these fundamental principles and values we already share and move forward with that. Right? That's how we start. You know, change doesn't start in a White House in D.C. It doesn't start in countries we've never been to. You know, it starts with ourselves at home, within our own community. For me, it starts here in Richmond. For me, it's to, to just you know, to stand up to the tyranny of a hero of government that's hurting my friends and my family in return, throwing them into cages for victims' crimes, robbing me of 50% but of my But what about income. people that are put in cages for legitimate crimes? For legitimate crimes, yeah, you can still have that in a contract. I mean, you can have in a contract consequences. Can you, though? In a, in a, an agreement, yeah, like give consent. Like, for example, like uh, rules in boxing, right? Nothing below the waist, no ear buddy, Mike Tyson, and then we can box. Yeah, but, but of course, that, that is and the then example he's of a government. Yeah, but he's, no, 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 that's voluntary. That's consent. Government is non consensual. The contract, like the Constitution, is not a real contract. You never signed it. You never gave power of attorney. Like, but Social I could Security. Leave the US. To where to? Another tax bond? It's here we have to stand up against the matrix. Right? No matter where you go or how far you hide, as long as government exists, you'll never have the freedom to be left alone if you wanted to. I could go to Africa. Go to Africa? There's governments in Africa. Yeah, but they, 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 can't, they can't find I, I don't. I don't want to run away, right? <laughs> to, to run away from your friends and family? Yeah. yeah. But, but I would say, how can you put someone in a cage without government? Because if they say they do something that yeah. they don't think is wrong. All right, so they don't... They don't uh, they don't uh, honor their agreements, right? So I, the, this agreement says I have to pay this, this fine. If I don't pay the fine, that means I'm not upholding my contracts. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. Every single business and individual will no longer uphold their contracts with you, right? There's the woods, right? So our civilization belongs to the civilized, right? And that's what you want to happen. That's how you prevent businesses from trying to. I see do that as progression towards the government, though. I see it. I see that as how it started. It came. It started as well, people. Government, whoa, 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 whoa! Government didn't start off consent, though. You had 37 people it, on their own they volition. They probably started off consent. Like you said, they tricked them, but it was consensual. Like people were like, "Wow, we got this big problem. How do we deal with this guy doing this thing wrong? He's running off. We need a well, judge." They did it. They give consent from the children, from women, from black people. They didn't get consent from uh, people who didn't own property. It's a very, very tiny, small. <laughs> percentage of people who yeah. gave the consent to themselves uh -huh. but they didn't actually go out and have contacts and is this okay with oh forget you we're just <laughs> going to do it anyways <laughs> That's good. and that was the only time you had a limited government right and look where we are today no matter how small of a government people advocate for it inevitably end result it turns into a leviathan yeah. like rome Right? The smallest city state ends up turning into a festering giant. You know, just that's what happens when you get that one tiny exception. And that's why you have to have to go for it uncompromising. I, I I agree, I hate the government. I just, <laughs> My name is Cal. I'm Andrew. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you, Andrew. Nice to meet you. Too. I got pamphlets of the life. <laughs>
heads anytime. Thank you. Of course, did, you, did you know that who's that other guy? Was? I don't know. He, he came out of nowhere. Uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, great religion. And like for me, it's like, I have nothing wrong with no problems with religion. Uh, again, you can believe whatever you want to believe, as long as you're not violently forcing those beliefs on each other. Yeah, yeah. yeah, anything goes then, right? Yeah. yeah. What about Satanism? Though? Satanism? Hey, practice Satanism in your room. Yeah, sure. <laughs> for, the, for the most part, people like the animosity people have. Or, I mean, the thing is, like, even when you go to a mall, you don't really see religious labels on there. You don't really see. Well, they're from the tribe of Henrico, from Gooshland, from you know, uh, East End. You just see individuals. You see cells. You see. You, you really kind of really kind of tolerate it you know, forget about it mm -hmm. for the most part a lot of people just don't want to see it in their own lives or in their own house you know even you have your own rules in your own home right mm -hmm. if someone though has more of a restrictive rule no one's going to come and visit i have to take off my shocks and my my shoes and my shirt it's like ah, i'm good well come on over for dinner now nah, i'm good right so you have a lot of communities that are a lot more open a lot more lax in those rules um so you think communities would develop their own rules kind of yeah yeah but you, you have amish for example already yeah. exists that's true. But I mean, then wouldn't you then, I guess, develop communities of violence? Well, people yeah. that advocate it and people that agree and then they have this like... I don't know who would want to live in that. That rape is okay. It's like, forget that. One person. Hey guys, come live here. No, you're good. This is this is guy. I don't know, man. There's North a lot of messed up people. What, what? There's this guy in North Dakota. Oh, so much acres of land. He's like a racist KKK guy. He's been out there for years saying, everybody just move over here and take over the city council. But, <laughs> but nobody's moving. Nobody wants to move there. No one wants to be associated with that guy. So then you had this one lone guy and calls himself a community. That's what I have. Sorry, I don't want to be associated with that. Uh, I don't want to be socially ostracized. I don't want, like, you have, like, um, like uh, uh, Starbucks saying, uh, like, if anyone wants to be able to marry regardless of your gender, you know, at, at the board meeting. If you have a problem with that, sell your stock and leave, right? <laughs> right? So you find a lot of openness and stuff like that. Yeah. So, I don't know. <laughs> you, and then those communities will have agreements with each other. Yeah. I mean, you don't see Disney World going after Six Flags or King's Dominion. Um, you don't see the food court people going after each other or competing t-shirt businesses at a mall. Mm -hmm. um, I just I, I just feel like possibly there's more inherent evil in some people. Okay, all right, so inherent Or not evil. inherent evil, that's the wrong word. Like, like taught evil? Because I don't think people are evil. Right. But maybe taught evil, that kind of thing. They see certain things, yeah, they yeah, develop yeah. certain characteristics. Um, and that's the other part of the pamphlet, the peaceful parenting aspect of it. You can't just say you're against state violence. You have to universalize the notion again, you know, non-aggression principle. Also includes children, right? If you were to spank a child, that teaches a child that violence is a way to solve problems in this world. You know, all the different psychological... I was spanked. You were spanked? Was How spanked. did you turn out? I'm great. You're great? Awesome, uh, fantastic. <laughs> I play soccer, I go to school, yeah, yeah, yeah. pass it, you know. Uh, well, that's the rare except I haven't heard anyone say that. For the most part, a lot of people say, I turn out okay or fine, mediocre. That's not a good stand standard to say, to have. But like, if you talk to your own parents, how was your childhood like? It's like, I too was spanked and hurt. But that, then you see, for the most part, there's a, that's the handbook that they were given, right? And yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, for like, yeah, if you look, I go back 80 years, everyone yeah, spanked. Right. Years, I mean. Instead of teaching negotiation skills, trying to teach I mean, to me though, we have, this is going to sound bad, but we have a lot of whiners today. In our society. Well, there's a lack of parenting, sure. So, it's but, so is that not necessarily from spanking directly, but right. from the idea but of discipline? Actually, a majority of the families do spank their children, about 93% of all American Still? families. Yeah. Wow, I didn't yeah. Know that. A huge, large percentage of that. So, in, in, so spanking, the huh. define as like hitting a child, striking a child, right? Do so the attention cause pain? Causes a lot of uh, psychological troubles uh, when they reach adulthood. But it didn't cause it in our parents. Uh, well, well, to say that. I mean, if you look, if you look back, you know, this has to be because the brain is still continuing developing, right? Mm -hmm. When the the baby is born out of the womb, the brain is, is still developing until the age of four. This has to be something traumatic enough for the child for the brain connections not to align right, mm -hmm. and then that leads to a lot of propensity to criminality, to suicide, to addictions, to to a lot of the problems that people have or today. You know, I think it, lead back to that. I would agree. I think it comes from like the origins of why you do it, though, because I think like yeah. if you go to like a a spanking where it's done in the intent of discipline, then I think there's a different effect than if I'm spanking a child out of anger. But that's a subjective view because to that child, you're like someone ten times size and like I, you're, you're so I think children, I think children pick me. it up though because I picked up on it. I know with my parents that if I did something wrong, what did I you do was, wrong that deserved for you to uh, get hit? Let's see. If I if I hit my brother, you hit your brother. Hit well, where brother did you learn that from? Like three. Because we were fighting over a toy. We were fighting over a toy. So instead of saying, "Well, let's teach you negotiation skills," right? I don't think you can have that conversation with a 
two year old. What, 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 what can't you to try to communicate with us? That's what the thing that you're not raising. I think it's some. But that's the thing. You're not you're not raising a dog. You're not raising an animal. You're raising yeah. a human being. You treat him as if you would for any other person. Because like if someone's of old age, just because they don't get it, do you, do you hit them too? Right. No. Right. So but at the same time, I think there needs to be. I don't know what you want to call it. A, a certain divide between parent and child. For the child to know that the parent is in charge and is has the authority, whereas if a parent negotiates with the child, that puts you on the same level. Why? What's wrong with seeing you as a human being? No, seeing you as yeah. a human being is fine. But if someone has authority, but you're negotiating with them, I think that puts you at the same level. I've seen lots of bratty children right. because their parents negotiate with them. So if I'm babysitting a child, and I'm like, hey, don't do that. And they're like, well, why can't I do that? Well, statistically, they say a lot of children who are not spending actually turn out well behaved, well disciplined, uh, higher test scores. I, mean, I don't know. Uh, well, I, I do know. That's, that's, that's and it's in the pamphlet. Uh, so they, they find even like, um, and that's what ends up happening. Uh, I'm going to hit you, right? And this goes back to why people don't question it, right? Uh, because I said so. Because I'm your father. Titles, you respect authority and titles, right? You don't respect the individual, right? Because I said, that cease is questioning. When people say, well, what about the government? People don't think about that unless you want to be peer pressure and thinking like that's bad don't you dare question authority don't you dare question government mm -hmm. right and so, saying the the honest authority is just saying I don't know let's find out together right sometimes sometimes let's just continue like that curiosity and, and, and try to develop that curiosity yeah. not to cease and stop it right mm -hmm. uh, and I think for most of us that's, that's why we're, we're here today you know government's like another projection of that life yeah we can incur interesting do you believe in God? In God, no. No? No. I believe in people. Um, I believe in individuals. There's individual people who are there for me. I mean, for me... When I, I say God, because a lot of people, when you say God, yeah, yeah, yeah. think of you know, either the guy in the road or what... I mean, With the beer. Like, where do you think <laughs> things came from, I guess, is the way to say it. Um, awesome spontaneous order. Um, awesome... There, there's some theories like uh, this sperm, sperm theory, like a lot of projections going out through space and kind of landing on these different planets. You can have, uh, there, there's a realization that there's a lot of water out in the solar system in the universe that we didn't think of possible, right? There's some pieces of it on, on the moon. There's this area in the galaxy, there's this huge glob of water just floating out there in space. Um, there's a lot of interesting stuff out there that we just discovered, and we're still stuck in this little tiny rock floating in space. Um, and then we think about government, it's like, when was the last time we were on the moon, right? Uh, so that's, and we'll never get off the rock with, with that. Uh, I want to discover, I still want to know. Um, but I can't, I can't, uh, I guess, put my, my thoughts out, out in that di di other direction. I spent years looking to see if there was something out there. Uh, years looking to see if, uh, like for like my own trials and tribulations, trying to see if there, not so much that there is a God, if there's anything out there. Uh, and I didn't find anything after like looking for a good decade. I mean, do you think God would be in our universe though? Well, I mean, that's, would he even be in our dimension, you could say? Uh, well, I guess e even still, even then, I would say that um, even, even in the things that uh, I guess in those particular uh, scriptures, you're trying to find it through your own trials and tribulations, right? A burning bush is not going to come show up to your, you know, in your room. You have to kind of go out there and, and look for this sort of stuff. Uh, I guess that's kind of lines a lot with deism uh, and uh, trying to, to find God you know, for yourself. And I guess I find that through through individuals. I find that through people. You know, it's there who, when I needed, I guess, someone the most who were there for me, right? Um, he wasn't there, or she wasn't there. Um, so I find that it was a distraction for me from realizing that it was people I should have been looking towards this whole time. And so the 10 years lost, uh, or longer than that, uh, looking in the wrong direction when I should have been looking here. You know? And uh, that's kind of what led me to start doing a lot of this, actually. Finding out actually people can be good. I used to think that that came from a hobbyist point of view, that people are evil, people are malicious and stuff like that. But that was my own background. What type of thing? Malicious, evil, kind of like Hobbes. Hobby. Hobby. Um, they even Hobbes himself had a very violent upbringing. His father even abandoned him. So of course he's going to go up, grow up and have those kind of beliefs of the world. And when I moved to Richmond, that's not what I found. Uh, I found really nice people, good people. And I was walking into the fan, a lot of parties. Here's a beer, PBR. Uh, I was like, in. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, where am I? Yeah. Uh, and that that changed my thoughts of people. Uh, that actually we can be good, and I've met a lot of good people here. And that's. But did, I mean, like for me, like I believe people are good too. Yeah. But to me, I still believe in God simply because of things around me. Sure. Like I just think, kind of, kind of like he was saying, like I'm just like, well, 
even like you were saying, like this the sperm theory, like just stuff yeah. going on the planets. Like, well, where did the planets come from? Where did, where did anything? Right. And I don't think we understand. So like, let's we keep figuring it. that out. Let's continue to figure it out. But I think like one of the things as humans, I've, we've been given like the logic to know there is a beginning. Right. Like we know that that is possible, but then we can't fathom anything outside of that. Like time, for instance. Right. Like I can't fathom anything outside of time, but I know there was a beginning some point so what was before that yeah, well, well, well you can't just say God that's the, that's, a, that's the cheapest the experience I think uh, I think that just says uh, that well it ends right there instead of don't don't investigate further well you oh. have to investigate who is God right investigate like, it define God? it yeah for, for me like, let, for let's me. keep going let's keep continuing to discover that maybe there is a, an old man with a beard at the end of the tunnel there I don't know <laughs> uh, but like I, I'm with you like I totally yeah. agree with like investigating and we're, I don't think I'll ever understand any of that like, right. fully and I don't think it's possible as one person like if because I believe God created the world created all the people I'm one of seven billion right. how am I going to understand this whole thing I'm not yeah. Yeah. but I think like you're saying it's kind of part of the process you're saying you keep going to understand more I think it's like I keep going and trying to understand more of God even if I won't completely understand ever and I recognize that I still like develop more and learn more because mm -hmm. it's kind of like you're saying I see God in people all the time right because I think I think God reaches out through people because I think if he made us then he can use us to do certain things right. so for me it's kind of like God the evidence of God to me is everything around okay because okay. Well, maybe that's kind of like what from? Jesus was saying. Uh, I'm reading a little bit about that. You know, he said like salvation. Maybe you know, there's always like a lot of good ideas that become bastardized and changed over time that didn't reflect the original intent. Mm -hmm. and maybe his original message was like, you know, seek salvation through yourself. Or through you, you'll find God. Not through me. Not through, through, through you know, through the one person. Through yourself, you'll find salvation. Through yourself, you'll find God. Um, not, uh, but of course, you, you threw it to one person and you, you monopolized that area. And then, uh, not a lot of people <laughs> claim that they, yeah, they claim that they have the word of God, right? Uh -huh. And it doesn't belong to anyone, then, right? It belongs to, to you, mm -hmm. right? I think, yeah. I mean, I kind of see what you're saying because, I mean, to me, like Jesus, I mean, from reading like through the Bible, like, he did say certain things like, you know, if you don't believe in me, then you don't believe in God because I am doing what God wants me to do. Right. I'm doing everything he tells me, that kind of thing. But so, he didn't write any of that stuff himself. First, it's true. Right. There's the, a lot of the guys that were with him wrote it. There's and then some there's a books lot of, missing. What about Mary Magdalene? <laughs> I've, I've done some research on yeah? the Bible being put together. Okay. And my conclusion is no one knows, to be honest, because there's, you got scholars that say this, and you got yeah. scholars that say this, and scholars say this. So to me, it's like, well, either way, I'm taking this or I'm not. Right. So it's just accepted or don't. So it's something that I just personally accept out of faith, you know, because I don't think it can be proven. Right. Just like the idea of God can't be proven, it's just faith. Mm -hmm. And so the idea of believing in the Bible is just faith because you can't prove either way because I wasn't there and I don't know exactly what happened. Yeah. And so I take the Bible for what it is. And so for me, like reading through it, it's almost like if I find certain things you can call contradictions or anything like that, I, I research it, but I haven't found things, you know, that truly, in my view, contradict each other. You know, one thing can't happen, sometimes another thing that can happen. Right. Um, and so I, I believe it is the Word of God simply because if all these books were put together, 39 books, right. and they were written over hundreds of years, and they all kind of point to like a message, but no one of the writers talk to each other about it right. and they just threw them all together and it makes this sense like wow what, it's kind of like your idea of the universe coming together like, yeah. what, are, what are the odds of that happening right. Right. Um, you know and the idea of Jesus I mean <laughs> to me the difference between Jesus and Christians and any other religion is like Christian the true Christianity to me not necessarily how it's portrayed right. is just a belief it's not an action but your actions change through that belief, whereas other religions are actions based on a belief, kind of. It's kind of like if I'm a Muslim or I'm a Jew or Buddhist or anything like that, I have to change who I am like, and change my actions, and then I'll get God's approval. Right, right, right. Whereas You're born in, again. Yeah, right. Yeah. And then to me, in Christianity, it's not change how you're acting, and then you're saved, because it says, 
it says nobody is perfect. It says nobody's righteous. You right. can't be. So to me, it's like, okay. So it's not about me changing my actions. It's like changing my belief, which then leads to a transformation of my actions right. in a way. So it's almost like, because if you have it as an idea of changing actions, leading to salvation, to me that makes kind of like a hierarchy, like you're saying. I act better than you, mm -hmm. therefore I'm more saved than you. Yeah. Does that make sense? <laughs> Whereas in Christianity, it's just... I paid my tithe. <laughs> exactly. So for me in Christianity, it's kind of like, it's saying we're all equal. Right. Everybody's the same. And it's this belief that gets you saved. It's not your actions. And to me, that's the difference, and that's why. I like that a lot, actually. Yeah. Uh, but that, that ties back into the non-aggression principle, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I guess in my own life, uh, a while ago, uh, doing a lot of, uh, I guess, immoral acts, um, but not ever kind of defining them and as so much, and uh, as, as you, you would, what, what is moral, what is good, mm -hmm. uh, and seeing the contradictory terms, and uh, finally coming to the realization and finding consistency of that, uh, finally adopting that, uh, I guess. I would say uh, I've progressed a lot better than, than I used to know who I used to be. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but yeah, that's the application of uh, the same principle. Not to say I'm better or worse than anyone because we all come from different areas. Mm -hmm. uh, like before I, I became an anarchist, uh, you know, we all are from, born from different areas of the matrix or come from different backgrounds or from mm -hmm. little spectrums before you jump off of it. And so, for me, yeah, I don't hold any kind of grudge or anyone, you know, yeah. any kind of yeah. negative stuff towards that. So. Yeah, and yeah. I, I'm like, I would agree the same, and I believe that's supposed to be the message in Christianity. Yeah. It's not preached. Like, because I'm, you know how people have denominations in Christianity? Yeah. I'm the denomination of non denominations. <laughs> it's kind of a denomination. <laughs> so, it's kind of because, like, I don't agree to, like, say, okay, I'm agree with this group, or I'm agree with this group. I'm just like, look, I'm a Christian, and I really read the Bible. I read the yeah. Bible, and that's what I go off of. And in reading the Bible, I mean, there's just so many passages that talk about nobody's perfect, don't judge anybody, and that kind of thing. It doesn't mean, you know, that you can't judge an action, per se, right. but you don't judge the person based on that action, which is why, like, I don't believe a gay person is any more in the wrong than a straight person that's doing something else wrong because they're both sinning in my view they're both sinning and it says no sin is greater than the other mm -hmm. so who am I to say like you gay person you're awful like I'm not going to associate with right. you whereas this guy over here he's fine right well, well I guess that you. makes sense if you're born into sin everyone's a sinner uh, there's no greater sin or less sin uh, it's just that personal redemption or salvation that you go towards uh, church church not so much I guess I guess the actions you're already taking are kind of is that what we're trying to say? Kind of. I'm, I guess what I'm trying to say is I think like today's Christian society yeah. is judgmental on certain actions. Right. Not, not so much, much on the beliefs. On okay, yeah, yeah. And yeah. so to me that's like kind of the opposite. After my own personal readings and going through the Bible, it's almost like, look, you can't judge a person. Like, because you don't know, like you're saying, you don't know that person, you don't know where they came from, you can't judge the heart, only God judges the person. It doesn't mean I can't judge an action, which is to say, if I see a child molester out there, I don't need to let my child right. go hang out with that person. It doesn't mean, but it also says, I don't judge that person, I don't hate that person, because I have, I don't know their heart, I don't know what they've been through. So, to me, that's kind of what it's saying is, you know, today, judgments are taken on people Unfairly, not unfairly. What's unequally, maybe? I think it's maybe maybe. too rash, uh, yeah. too quickly. Uh, media based, you know, prone yeah. to uh, to red herrings and character attack and all this sort of stuff. Not actually trying to provide a, an objective uh, viewpoint to understand the circumstances to what led up to to those events. Uh, yeah. 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 I don't know. Well, it's interesting because government does exactly uh, just that, right? Even before you're convicted for a crime, they'll pass your photo, you know, on the yeah. news and says like, ah, oh, this person here is well, like, well, media government, but what's the difference? Yeah. Sometimes. But but at the same time, there's a guy, a cop who got caught like masturbating at the Sarsifield Town Center here, but uh, his face is not on the news, right? They didn't plaster his face out there. So it's interesting how, of course, if they're in charge of it, they the exceptions are given to them, mm -hmm. uh, and they treat us differently. Yeah, but I, I like the, the non-judgmental point of view. I, I'm pretty much in the same boat with that. Um, I don't spend much of my time judging people or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I don't necessarily think a lot of people do. I just think that, I think the message that's behind the Bible is to a lot. Like, people don't see it for it is. Like the guy who was like, you know, give me 10% of your money. Right. The other guy that was here and was like, 
calling the guy schizophrenic, I think that viewpoint comes because of, I guess, the stereotype around Christianity, around the idea, because people don't see what they're supposed to be seeing in Christians. Right. They see, you know, I guess you could call it what would be Pharisees back in the day, where Jesus preached against religion. He preached against the idea of religion because religion is rules where he preached a belief because a belief doesn't put anybody above anybody else. Right. Rules do. Kind of like the government, yeah, you're saying. Yeah, yeah. It's exactly the same. Um, because, you know, like I said, when you have rules like that, then I can say, well, I followed all these rules. Did you follow these rules? You didn't follow those rules. Right. So I'm here, you're there. So It's a dumb word, judgment. Yeah. 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 So to me, I think that message is kind of not got across. Because people look at it that way. I think people look at Christianity as rules. Right. And not a belief, which is the total opposite. What do you think about, uh, I guess, the interesting, like, God flooding the world and killing people in that sort of sense? What are your thoughts on that? Well, they seem like a, like a good, healthy talk about this stuff. I, for me, I, like, I never really liked to venture so much into, like, religious talk and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Very sensitive error for a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. uh, especially when they come to me, I was like, I'm not religious. <laughs> and then and I was like, look, but I'm not saying, like, anything. I'm not, I'm not like, a militant atheist. I really, I wouldn't say, like, I'm an atheist at, at all in that, in that much. It's like, I'm not... I don't really think much about that sort of mm-hmm. stuff. Um, but what, what are your thoughts, I guess, on the uh, criticism people have for saying, like, you know, God drowned, you know, I guess we'll call it genocide. The world. Yeah, yeah, the world. He killed the world. Um, from reading, I guess, New Testament, Old Testament, like in the Bible, it seems to me that the difference between God now and then is Jesus. Right. Because I do believe in right and wrong. And if, to me, if you believe in right and wrong, then there is a consequence for both. Like a consequence if I do good, a consequence if I do evil, or something bad has to happen or something good. You know, reward, yeah. punishment. And so with Adam, if he did something wrong, then there had to be a consequence for that. And the consequence for that, to me, was like a disconnect from God because it said God walked with Adam and talked with Adam. Now whether Adam is a, um, what's it called, an actual person or just a, um, Word. Like when you when you're saying something, but it's not directly what you're saying. Not a but analogy. It's, not really. It starts with a P, doesn't it? A P. I'm not quite sure. But but his crime was eating an apple. Okay. Right. We'll say eating an apple when God said don't eat an apple. Yeah. Constantly. That's so tempting, man. Right. It's definitely tempting. <laughs> it's definitely tempting. And then you have to get into the whole idea of Satan and angels because if you read in Genesis, it says the earth was now formless, which means something happened right. to make it formless so there's this whole idea that god made angels first and they were around and then sin birthed with lucifer who was one of god's who's, angels who's one of god's angels that's where like the the birth of sin happened right. like, that's where it started and it's interesting to read like some of the old testament talking about it because it's it's like if you're not like you could just read through and a lot of passages seem like, what is this saying? But then you get to something that's like, whoa, that's interesting. Right. So to me, the Old Testament is kind of hard in that way. But anyways, with Adam, if he did something wrong, then there was a consequence for that. And so I believe the consequence for that was like a divide between him and God, because God couldn't be around something wrong. Like he couldn't be around sin, because God was without sin. But he created the world, though. He did he create the world. He create, I guess, those options and opportunities and sin. And Lucifer. Wasn't Lucifer cast out because he questioned God? I have Lucifer. Guy, it says he got cast out because he wanted to overtake God. Oh. Oh. Because God said, basically, God made angels. Right. And they were just below him. Right. And then God said, I'm going to make people, I'm going to make humans, and they're going to be just below me. And Satan was fourth in line or something. He was right under God. He was, like, in charge. Uh, he was one of the archangels, which is one of three in charge of like the yeah. whole group. And that's why he took a third of the angels with him, because he was in charge of the third. And so, basically, Lucifer was like, whoa, what are you doing? You're going to make these things above me? You can't do that. And so it says in like Ezekiel, he was the most beautiful thing. He thought he was beautiful. He had pride. And when God said he was doing this, he freaked out. Right. He's basically like, what are you doing? You can't do this. And he tried to overthrow God with a third of the angels, obviously that didn't work and so God cast him out huh now the idea of us being made on the earth people are like well why are we here my question has always been if God cast out Lucifer and a third of the angels because they rebelled against him right. throws him down to earth then he makes man and puts him on the earth why like to me it's like 
<laughs> it's almost like you've cast out this evil thing, and then you make man. And if you make man in his in your image, which to me means we have a body, a soul, and a spirit. No belly buttons. <laughs> <laughs> belly buttons. But essentially, like, I mean, I believe in a body, a soul, and a spirit. Yeah, 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 body, yeah, yeah. Spirit, and then a soul. Um, he made us in his image and put us on the earth. And so, kind of what I get from that, I, you know, I have to read more, but my loose belief is that we're supposed to take, he says take dominion over the earth and all that's in it, mm -hmm. which to me includes the devil, basically. We are supposed to, in other words, take dominion. Because we're made in his image, we can take dominion over things. I mean, if you think about it, like humans in and of themselves, <laughs> this kind of is blasphemous. We're, we're kind of like gods on earth. Because we can make, we can take things, we create, we can do all sorts of stuff like that. And I think it's because we're made in God's image and he put us here to take dominion over everything. So long story short, get to the flood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. No, that's, that's, I, I like that a lot. Uh, I guess dominion even over hell you're saying or, yeah. or the sin. So it would be like trying to battle that sin, trying to still battle that here on yeah, earth. Yeah, I guess uh, you could say that. Okay, and I guess that's, that's an interesting, I like that. So basically if, if Again, you do something wrong, consequences for that. If Adam did something wrong, eating an apple, divide between him and God. God cannot be with sin. That's why he had to cast the devil out. He had to cast the devil out. Now, so if you disagree with God. Not disagree, although God is perfect. So if you disagree with God, then you're imperfect. Uh. <laughs> so I guess you kicked out the first I guess you could say, you could say disagree with God in a sense, right. but because he is God, right. he's always right. So it's kind of like, why am I disagreeing? My house. Yeah. So because of that divide, God couldn't, there was a divide between men and God. And because of that, I think we, since we lost that contact necessarily with God, most people became subject to the evil that was here, that we were supposed to dominate. Mm -hmm. That evil, like it tricked Adam into eating the fruit. It's like, hey, go eat that. Like, right. get, get that. And then you'll know what I am. It's like the knowledge of good and evil. I think eventually people were supposed to eat the fruit. I think God put us here and eventually we were to eat the fruit to have the knowledge of evil. But I think God wanted us to mature enough to handle that evil. Personally, like that's kind of like something I've been thinking because why put the tree? Right. Why is it possible? And then why put the evil here? And so the evil is just like, hey, go eat that. Then you'll know what I am, but you're not ready to know what I am. And so to me, he eats the fruit, gains the knowledge. God said, hey, I told you not to do that. I can't be here anymore. Now evil has access. Mm -hmm. Evil can get into people. It can talk to people. I mean, you got Cain and Abel. You know, he kills his brother. Um, all sorts of stuff like that happening to the point where evil is just ruling the world because people weren't ready to deal with it. Right. And so to me, then you've got this one guy. No. You know, and he's the one guy that I guess you could say battles the evil in his own. He's like, tries to do what is right because he right. said God found him righteous. And so God's like, look, I don't know what to do. I made this world. I put this evil here and I put these people on it to dominate the evil. And the evil is just <laughs> roaming wild. It's taken right. over. So I was like, okay, I got to start over. But there's some, uh, I, don't, I can't remember what it is. There's something about him creating Adam from the dirt there was something like he couldn't make man from the dust again. Hmm. So in other words, if he started over, he couldn't do it again. I'm trying that to remember interesting. why. Because yeah, I remember reading like in the Genesis, there's two versions of Genesis. There's one where uh, man created man and woman at the same time equally. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's another version of there, of course, you know, he took a rib cage for the bone from it and created uh, Eve from that. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's interesting that there's two versions that's kind of go side I've by side. I've never actually heard the version yeah, really? that okay, yeah, yeah. isn't created equally. It's two like two versions. Same time. Yeah, same time. So okay. there's a lot of people who think that the first woman, though, was called Lilith. And then uh, was cast out because uh, she wasn't subordinate to Adam, I guess, in that sense. Uh, so that's what you're stuck with, uh, Eve. Yeah. So yes, it's interesting. But at the same time, these stories, though, the, the conjecture of it kind of clash, and you still have the two uh, similar stories, mm -hmm. but one at the same time, one after the Separately. other. Yeah. Um, I'll have to look into that because I haven't even heard that actually. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, I guess look up Lilith. 
Yeah, uh, yeah. you're looking at him. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing that. So, yeah, I mean, for me, the flood happened because evil was taking over, which is what God... But couldn't he just in, in charge Noah to fighting that evil then? Because, I mean, he, he... I guess you could say he could have, except I think God had limited access to the world because we had... Basically, as people, I think we have dominion over the earth. We are in charge. And we can let God work through us, or we can let evil work through us. Mm -hmm. I think that's the two choices. God gave us dominion. We have the authority. So God could say, hey, I know it. You can do this. But I think Noah had limited ability because he was one man. Still a man. Even though God could work through him, every other man on earth was letting evil work through him. But you're on God's, God's got your back. I God, I, God's got your back. And I'm sure something could have happened. I'm sure something could have been done. But I think, you know... Because Jesus hadn't come yet, I think God's judgment came down on people right. because they weren't, quote unquote, forgiven yet because their sins had been paid for. And so God does the flood, starts over, and then it ends up happening again, you know, Babel, Tower of Babel, everybody's getting yeah. people together. And he's like, okay, speak different languages. Maybe that'll get, get, get separated. <laughs> the more y'all are together, the worse you do. <laughs> so interesting obstacles he puts into place for us from just trying to <laughs> to understand this <laughs> yeah um, but I guess that's, that's part of the trials and tribulations and I guess that's part of maturity mm -hmm. um, again you're mentioning that uh, like that knowledge that you're supposed to grasp and gain and understand and mm -hmm. trying to understand what evil is mm -hmm. uh, that's a healthy aspect of um, adulthood I guess yeah. of life yeah um, and I think if you think about Adam if he was the first man I mean he was he was a man but he was a child yeah because while he was a grown body, he was literally like just he made. Didn't, he he didn't grow up like, as a little baby. Yeah. There was no parenting there. Exactly. <laughs> and so God, I think God was, like I said, God walked with him. We don't know how long before he ate the food. Or he crawled with him. Come on. Yeah. Walk. <laughs> <laughs> so that stuff was happening. But I think, you know, yeah. to me, I mean, you just have those simple questions that are never really, I guess you could say, answered. Never answered like, okay, God made us. We're here. Put the devil down here, and then we sinned, and now we're doing all this stuff. And we think like we're born with sin, and we're born with all this stuff. I think God made us, and He said we, that it's, this is good. I don't think people are now evil because God said we were good. Right. So I think we are still good. We're just we just don't have knowledge. We we have acts like evil has access to us, and God has access to us, but we don't think of it that way. Right. So then we just go with whatever is easiest. Uh -huh. So, I mean, yeah, why have a tree with the knowledge? But if not, eventually, you're supposed to know. Yeah. And why put evil here and then say, hey, have dominion over the earth and everything in it? Well, you put that in it, so then we're supposed to have dominion over that. Right, right. So, so I guess interesting challenges, though, uh, makes a great story. Well, I'm not talking about like the Bible, but, like, to, to face that evil, to fight that tyranny. Um, uh, I, I guess I relate a lot to that. I guess with uh, the tyranny of government, of, of that evil. Yeah, uh, yeah vanquish that see I, I I'm like I'm so with you on the government like I don't like it I just I just don't know how feasible it is well, that, well that's the thing that nobody really knows yeah. right no one has one right answer one right solution right it, it, it's a community it's like um, again like agriculture back then you end that system of violence nobody knew how it was going to look like 100 years later mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. like so, you're saying technology yeah 100 years ahead who knows, what we Ooh, have. Who knows? yeah so that's and that's the beauty of it because it's only the free market mm -hmm. that can create those things. Government doesn't create anything. Everything it gives away was stolen from someone else. Yeah, you know. Yeah, someone so, did the work. Yeah, like in econ, we say there's no such thing as a free lunch. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were talking about that with teammates, and I was like, "Do you think uh, people should get free health care? Like if they can't afford it?" And they're like, "Yeah." And I was like, "Well, you realize it's not free." And they're like, "What do you mean?" I was like, "Well, it's called free, but someone else." Yeah. Money taken from them, given to them, then they get it. So it's free to them, but it costs them. And then they get it. So right. We it's got not it. free like a free Starbucks. Yeah. That's, that's free. <laughs> we, right? yeah. we got in. We got into some discussions. Like Apple that, creating the new uh, operating system, giving away for free called Mavericks. That's free. They're not charging, right? That, that's free. No, it didn't yeah. come on the back to anyone. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. All right, cool, man. Well, we ha we have monthly freedom gatherings, philosophic discussions. The next one's on the 16th of November. Um, but really, just potlucks. Be, I play for the VC soccer team, actually. Do you? <laughs> so, uh, November 14th, 16th, and 17th, we are in the 8th and tournament. Eight tournaments? Okay, yeah. okay. Well, I'm, I'm pretty much here every day I try to be. Um, but at the same time... Uh, you got it. I'm sure you got a lot of people trying to talk to you. <laughs> oh, no, no. Uh, 
No, I, I like your perspective. This is very, 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 this has been a lot of fun, especially you have a good economic uh, background perspective and stuff like that. And that's, those are like the difficult errors sometimes for, for people to comprehend and understand. Mm -hmm. um, and that's very useful, uh, I guess, in, in, I guess, uncovering the veil of this matrix, right, to, to yeah. fight that darkness. Uh, you're talking about lack of education. That's, that's, that's good knowledge to share. Yeah. Right. We'll see. We'll see, man. It's a pleasure. It was really man. nice talking to you. <laughs> you too. Yeah. I'm gonna do my econ homework now. <laughs> <laughs> so, but um, yeah, I'll try to find you out here another day. When I'm around. All right, yeah. man. Sounds good, man. Nice talking to you too, man. Take good care. Yeah.